Hello, I'm Chief Dave McGrail. Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. In this segment, we're going to be talking about high-rise firefighting, standpipe operations, and specifically establishing an appropriate fire attack stairwell. As you can see from this placard here, we're in stairwell number three of this building. For our scenario, our fire is going to be in apartment 623 on the sixth floor. We have engine three on the floor below preparing to stretch an attack line. We have truck four up here on the fire floor establishing and locating the fire apartment as well as establishing refuge areas in the event of a wind impacted fire. When you're choosing your attack stairwell, take your time and be deliberate about this and communicate between companies and with the incident commander. Your attack stairwell should be a stairwell that is going to give you the best, fastest, closest, and most importantly the safest access to the fire. Critical information and excellent communications have to occur on the fire ground. That information transmitted from the truck company to the engine company as to what's going to be the best, closest, fastest, and safest fire attack stairwell. That information also has to be communicated to the incident commander. From there, the incident commander can assure that we're also establishing an evacuation stairwell, which in most two stairwell buildings is going to be the stairwell at the opposite end of the building or the stairwell opposite from what the attack stairwell is going to be. For our scenario here, stairwell number three is going to be the fire attack stairwell, at the opposite end of this building, it's labeled as stairwell number two. That will be the evacuation stairwell. From here, let's go out onto the fire floor and specifically look at what the truck company is doing in terms of that reconnaissance and size up of that fire apartment and establishing refuge areas. Here we are up on the fire floor. We have a simulated fire in apartment 623. You can see that we have a truck company here, two members at the door to the fire apartment, 623, two members at the door to a preferred refuge area apartment, which is 625. These truck company firefighters are doing a reconnaissance and a size up so that they can establish where the fire apartment is, prepare for forcible entry, possibly search ahead of the hose line depending on conditions, and most importantly, they're going to be maintaining the control of these doors so that the engine company can stretch a dry hose line in this hallway. There will be early communication from the truck company to the engine company as to what's going to be the best, closest, fastest, and safest stairwell to use for fire attack stairwell. That communication from truck 4 to engine 3 would sound something like this. Engine, engine three, 3, truck 4. four. Stairway, stairway 3, three is, your is your attack stairwell. stairwell. Stairway, stairway 3, three attack stairwell. stairwell. Truck 4 is given that communication to engine 3. Now they have a very good idea what's going to be the best, closest, fastest, and safest access to the fire apartment. Okay, we're getting ready to start the apartment stretch. Some critical information for you here. It's absolutely of paramount importance for safety that we always hook up on the floor below for standpipe operations in multi-story and high-rise buildings. In this situation, Engine 3 will be hooking up on the fifth floor and stretching up to the sixth floor, which is our simulated fire attack floor. Here comes Engine 3, and this is drop point number one where they will start this apartment stretch. Okay, guys, we're going to make an apartment stretch using 150 feet. Up here on the fire floor once again, truck four has already communicated with engine three and established the best, closest, fastest, and safest attack location from what is now going to be the attack stairwell, stairwell number three. There's also critical communication that has to come from truck four up on the fire floor to the incident commander. The incident commander needs to know what is the fire apartment and specifically what is the location of that fire apartment for the incident commander. The incident commander can't see what we can see up here on the fire floor from the street. But truck four can let the incident commander know that geographical location. They'll let the incident commander know that. They'll let the incident commander know that they're also establishing a firefighter refuge area in the event of a wind impacted fire, as well as what is the attack stair and what is the evacuation stair. In this case, fire attack stairwell is stairwell three. The evacuation stairwell is stairwell two. The communication to the incident commander would sound something like this. Command, Command truck four, four. Fire, fire apartment 623. Refuge, Refuge is one, one to the west, west unit 625. Fire, fire is on the Maryland, Maryland side of the building, Bravo side. Attack, attack is stairway, stairway three, and back stairway two. Give me a message, GC. 
With that critical communication in place, these firefighters can continue with the operation. Okay, here we are at drop point number one. Engine three has placed three hose lines in place for a 150 foot stretch. It's important to note that engine three has also proactively brought a fourth hose pack with a nozzle on it and an inch and a half to two and a half inch increaser in the event that they need to extend the hose line. This hose pack, this fourth hose pack, will stay down here on the floor below in case it's needed. Critical that you understand the way the Denver hose pack is built is so that the two straps are on the male side. Therefore, the engine company, when they place these packs properly at drop point number one, nozzle pack, two straps going toward the fire, and then the other two packs with the two straps, male side going toward the fire, female side going toward the water supply. This is a proper layout at drop point number one with the Denver hose pack. Engine three is now going to proceed with their apartment stretch going from the fifth floor, floor below, up to the sixth floor, which is our fire floor, headed towards apartment 623, the fire apartment. Critical to the apartment stretch is that a firefighter operates at friction points. The first friction point we're going to encounter is the hap landing in a typical return stair configuration. It's critical that that third firefighter follows up behind the nozzle firefighter and the backup firefighter and takes a position at the hap landing to ensure that the stretch maintains forward progress. This is our first friction point that we have to address. Here we are now at drop point number two. For the apartment stretch, drop point number two is in the fire floor hallway just inside the door from the stairwell. Remember, we can stretch dry in this hallway because truck four has a closed and controlled door to the fire apartment. The hose pack that is brought up, which is the middle hose pack of the three hose packs, where it is brought up and placed at drop point number two, it is placed on the ground in an intact fashion. From here, as the firefighters continue to the fire apartment or drop point number two, this hose pack will come apart just like a pumper laying out from a hydrant to a fire. Firefighters are now proceeding from drop point number two. They're going to make their way down the hallway. One truck firefighter is controlling the door. Three truck firefighters are inside doing a search. At drop point number two, the firefighters are going to identify the halfway mark and stretch the hose away from the fire apartment door so that the hose is fully stretched out prior to charging with water. From this location, the truck firefighter controlling the door will allow for the firefighters on the engine company to go in with a charge line as soon as the line is charged and they're ready to advance. Okay, here's the completed apartment stretch. At the point of drop point number three, the firefighters stretch the hose away from the fire apartment door based on the swing of that door so that we have as much straight two and a half going into the apartment as possible. That makes it a lot easier. Down the hall here, we see where the halfway point is on the hose. That's our reference point to stretch the hose away from the apartment in the benign, non-IDLH atmosphere. And then the nozzle, just a couple of feet away from the door so that when that stretches out when it's being charged, it gives us room to work and operate. That's it for the apartment stretch. Thanks for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Dave McGrail.